Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 13, episode 16. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Share it on your Facebook group. Share it on your TikTok. Honey, share it, share it, share it. If you get anything out of the content. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, we see the opening montage. You know how they do. They scan over all the ladies. Crystal's daughter is giving her a mommy makeover. Dorit is out with her kids. Honey, it's looking very performative. Anna Marie is prepping for a Mother's Day brunch. In the next scene, Erica goes to see Dr. Jean. Hey, Dr. Jean, girl. So she's telling her, you know, things are going well now. Things are looking up. 2021, baby, I had on that mascara and people were seeing right through me and I made sure it wasn't waterproof so that the tears would flow. And now I'm here and I have a residency in Vegas. Okay, and I'm nervous as hell. This is where Dr. Jean lost. Dr. Jean starts talking about, I mean, yeah, you're used to unlimited funds. Can y'all be any more tone deaf? Yes, she's used to other people's money. Unlimited funds of other victims' money. I don't think I would mention Tom and his unlimited funds. What is wrong with y'all? Erica, if you ever want to get out of the stigma that is attached to you, then you need to stop letting people say things like this in your presence. And also some of the things that you say. She was like, yeah, you know, right or wrong, Tom encouraged me. I get so irritated when Erica talks about how afraid she is to take risk because Tom's not there to financially back her. Ma'am, it's people that can't even afford to feed their families. Now, is that your responsibility? It is not. But read the room. You have been afforded countless opportunities and a second chance. You're not destitute. Please stop acting like you're so poor. I'm sick of seeing it. I'm sick of hearing it. Bravo is paying you a good check to come and play in our faces each and every week. Outside of that, you are still getting opportunities because you are Erica Jane, a real housewife of Beverly Hills. Please stop playing with me, Erica. So then she tells her, you know, I did win an appeal and I was looking for, you know, maybe some apologies. I'm so sick of hearing about these dang on earrings. I don't know what to do. She is telling her about everybody and being mad at them because she feels like they should have apologized to her because of those dang on earrings. Dr. Jen tells her that closure has to come from her. And I wish that it would so she could get past this. In the next scene, Sutton is at the stable to visit Santos. Y'all remember she bought that horse and she does a little ride. And I'm like, okay, Sutton, you're doing good. So then Kyle shows up to take digs, talking about Sutton doesn't look like she can ride. Remember when she was on the bull? Actually, she's doing really well. Kyle, you'll just be saying any old thing. You really don't know what to say, so you just say whatever. I have never seen someone get in a confessional and say the dumbest things. Just like when you said Crystal was at Anna Marie's mercy. When all Anna Marie did was say, what's going on? Talk to me. How many fingers am I holding up? Girl, goodbye. Moving forward. So they start talking about the trip. And Sutton tells Kyle that she texted her ex-husband goodbye because you know he's moving out of the country. She says she's been divorced for six or seven years. Sutton, baby. The way that you are carrying on, you're carrying on like the ink wasn't dry. The way he sprung that divorce on you, per you, okay, I would let him go wherever he wanted to go. I feel like Sutton has a hard time letting people who do her wrong go, i.e. Kyle, wanting to be surrounded by Erica and what she does a little later on in the episode and this husband of hers. Yes, I understand that you two have a history and you have children together. And he lived right down the street. And if you needed anything, he would come and help you. But baby, he didn't want you. And the way that he sprung that divorce on you and said, hey, today's Thursday. By Monday, you need to have an attorney. But I mean, sometimes it's just hard to let that one go. Uh, side note, sudden, your hair looks great in this scene. I was just looking at it. It looked so luxurious. It was very shiny. It was very flowy. It just looked so pretty. Something about that scene and the way your hair looked, it made you look so refreshed. I loved it, honey. Whoever did your hair for that scene, baby, keep them. So then they started talking about Kyle and Mauricio's marriage and him being so busy. She said for so many years, she did everything around the house, the kids, the, the planning this, the planning that. 
And now she has time to do the things that she wants to do. And so they're equally as busy. This is that age old story that we hear from every housewife. At least once during their reign as a housewife. He's so busy. I'm busy with the kids. I do everything. He doesn't do anything. Uh, okay, we got it. Moving forward. In the next scene, Garcelle is doing a campaign for Cyber Smile. It's for people who have been victims of cyberbullying. And I think that it's beautiful that she's doing this with her two boys. Garcelle is telling Jax how proud she is of him because they go through the whole thing and they do the PSA. They have a $10,000 GoFundMe. She's partnering with them to stop cyberbullying. So it's a good cause. I'm down for it. Her and Jack sit down, they start to talk. She's telling him that she knows that he wants some freedom. So taking an Uber to meet his friends, uh, it's okay. Now, let me tell you something. I don't like Jax's attitude at times. I understand he's a teenager and baby, they could be, ooh, honey. When I tell you they could be jerks, but at the same time, it's a level of respect that you have for your mom, teenager or not. And sometimes I just feel like, although he's expressing himself and that is good, I want my son to be able to express himself to me but respectfully. And I sometimes don't think that he thinks of Garcelle as his parent. And baby, get yourself together. But I'm going to freak out when that time comes with my son, but I'm happy that she's allowing him to show that he's responsible enough to handle it. Because it's going to build his confidence. And the more that he does it, the more that she'll be at ease, the more that he'll be at ease. I don't think I'm gonna ever be at ease because I'm a worry wart and every single thing worries me. Honey, he in the house with me. If he get quiet for too long, I'm like, hey, what's going on? Okay. Just wanted to make sure you were still okay. <laughs> My nerves get bad. But baby Jack's like, like he going to leave the house, find him a job, a wife, honey, and build him a house from scratch. The house that Jack's built. Moving forward. In the next scene, Sutton and Steve are going out for their second date. Okay, Sutton with the second date, baby, they ain't going to be able to make fun of you no more. Okay. Second date under your belt. So of course, Sutton has her grapefruit juice in her purse. Sutton, have some class, okay? <laughs> have some class, honey. I don't know why Sutton seems so much older than in her 50s to me. Because she was like, dating in your 50s, it's really hard to get back out there. Now, I think that it's cute that she's dating. But, okay, so my son is eight right now. And I'm 41. When I'm 50, he's going to be old enough where I feel comfortable enough to date. I don't feel like I'm going to be no old looking woman at 50. I feel like I'm still going to be popping. Now, maybe it's because mentally I am mature, but I still feel very young. And if to look at me, you wouldn't think that I was 41 until I told you. But Sutton just reads so much older to me. But um, I see you being flirty, Sutton. You know, laying your head on his shoulder while y'all are playing darts. I said, oh, okay, Sutton, get flirty, honey. I think Steve might be a winner. I really do. Anybody that tolerates Sutton and them little kitten sweaters she like to wear, I think he might be all right. But you better make sure he's not an opportunist. Because you know, we seen how the Steve over there with Vicky worked out. In the next scene, Kyle is at the house having a drink with Mauricio. They're doing couples therapy. They're sitting there. They're talking about it. Kyle is telling him that she's worried about saying certain things to him. They both did agree that therapy is good for them. And it helps them to reflect on their relationship. She's in a confessional saying that she doesn't want her daughters to settle for less or think that it's okay for a man to, you know, mistreat you. And I'm just like, what, what are we missing? Something is missing from this. Mauricio is then saying that they're in a much better place because things have gotten so hard. And basically what I'm hearing is they're both booked and busy. They're growing and going. And they seem to be growing apart instead of growing together. I also feel like Mauricio and Kyle are acting in this scene and scene and let's wrap it up something about when they do scenes together it just looks as though kyle has coached him any scene even when she did the scene with kim it seems like kyle produces the scene they rehearse the scene and then they shoot the scene kyle please stop doing that it doesn't give authentic the only time that you seem like you're having a semi-normal conversation is when you're having a conversation with the actual other housewives but Mauricio and you, baby, no. Over on the other side, Anna Marie is having a diamonds and champagne Mother's Day brunch. Baby, she got Corbell. Baby, I can afford the Corbell. <laughs> I'm not finna play with you, Anna Marie. Mm -mm -mm. But it was a very nice setup, so I ain't gonna be too hard on her. She invited all of the ladies to come over. She says she wants to try and fix things with Crystal. 
Crystal is getting ready for the brunch at her house. And she's like, I'm happy that, you know, we can move forward. I'm happy to talk about it. Doree FaceTimes PK while she's getting ready because it's Mother's Day weekend. And she wants to know when he's going to be home. He gonna tell her, well, I mean, you're not my mother. Oh, baby, Mr. Dr. Pepper will get an earful. I don't give a damn if I'm your mother or not. I am the mother of your children. You better be happy somebody even laid down with you. Because if money wasn't attached, honey, I don't think it would be anybody but you and that Dr. Pepper. Okay, and them large pizzas you like to eat by the slice. Please stop acting a fool. That was rude as hell. Well, you're not my mother. Like, sometimes I don't think that men think about things that come out of their mouths before they say them. What are you saying? And you know Dorit was taken aback. Bubba, I'm filming. <laughs> we see it, Dorit. We see it. So the ladies start to arrive, right? Because now we're at the brunch. Garcelle arrives first. Garcelle, I love that color on you, baby. And that ponytail is giving what that ponytail is supposed to give. Girl, you're looking rich, hunty. You're looking rich. Kyle arrives next. Hey, girl. Erica arrived in her Barbie pink suit. Erica went straight to the diamonds. Honey, I know that's right. She's like, let me see what I can get. The car rolled 15 times. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Erica and Sheree are my two favorite housewives to imitate. I love when their seasons come on because I'm going to give you an Erica Jane and I'm going to give you a joggers. I'm going to give it to you. Oh, honey, I love everything about it. Go on over there and look at the diamonds, Erica. So Erica is talking to Anna Marie again with the anger. Erica, let it go, honey. Take a page out of Elsa's book and let it go. So Anna Marie brings up Crystal and she's like, we haven't reached a resolution. We need a resolution. We have so much confusion. Honey, shout out to Aaliyah. Crystal and Dorit arrive next. Crystal, you look so pretty. I love that updo. It's very flattering. I was really stunned when Crystal walked in. I said, Crystal, you look beautiful. She looked very pretty. Everybody's hair was doing something great on this episode. I don't know what exactly was going on, honey. What kind of products y'all are y'all using? Kenya more hair care. <laughs> are y'all using Kenya more hair care? Because baby, the hair was hairing on this episode. Garcelle, Sutton, Crystal. Baby, the hair was hairing. Sutton arrives, child, and she is loose as a goose. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. She was tipsy, y'all. She could barely get up the stairs. Ma'am, what is happening? Okay, Sutton. Nah. I know you had you a roadie or a floaty or whatever the hell y'all be talking about when y'all be taking that look on the road. But girl, why are you tipsy before getting it? I guess she had to make sure that small esophagus was full of liquor before she <laughs> before she came. Before she came to an Anna Marie event. Mm -mm -mm. You got to get liquored up because ain't no telling if she going to mention that esophagus. Oh, child, this is a fool. Moving forward. So they start doing a little jewelry shopping while Sutton is making herself a double. And she told them, I don't drink Corbell, honey. I got to go make me something else. Erica is telling Crystal that she respects the fact and she appreciates the fact that she says something to her about contributing to her pain. Anyway, Anna Marie pulls Crystal to the side because she wants to talk things out. Crystal tells her, listen, I want to move forward. Anna Marie wants to move forward as well. So guess what we finna do? B, moving forward. Okay, now one of y'all lied, but I'm happy that it's over and y'all are willing to move on. The power of Mother's Day. I don't know what's going on, but I'm happy it's happening. Sutton is telling the ladies about her date because now everybody's together and how Steve wants a kiss. She was like, yeah, in her confessional, I just need to know him a little bit more and I also need to see a health certificate. Ma'am, you licked Kyle's feet. I think he may need to worry about where your damn mouth has been. Not you needing to see a health certificate and you done put your mouth on Kyle's nasty feet. And you know them dogs be everywhere, child. Anyway, so the party is underway. Everybody's laughing, looking, brunching. So Dorit is asking how Anna Marie and Crystal are. Dorit always asking a question. Uh, how, how are you two? They're fine. Didn't you see them hug? Oh, messy girl. Erica then says, you know, what I want from this group is I want us to stand up for each other more. You know, be there for each other. And I don't feel like you guys stood up for me. She said half of her wants an apology and the other half says if they wanted to apologize, they would. Well, half of them did. And if half of them wanted to, they would, but they damn didn't because they don't give a damn. Dorit said, well, you know, it was very hard to support you, Erica, because you had no empathy. 
But me and Kyle, we had blind support. Now, Dorit, this you're on point with because you are absolutely correct. You, Dorit, and Renna, Renna especially, y'all definitely followed behind Erica. But the truth of the matter is her not having empathy is not up for debate. So I don't really understand why she wants an apology. So Kyle is stating her case because, you know, she doesn't want Erica to be mad saying, you know, I told everyone who would listen that you didn't do it. I did. Yeah, I mean, she did. And also she was the one that you met for that fake scene with that waterproof mascara. Remember? So Kyle did have your back. Garcelle says, listen, I didn't want you to fall, but I had an opinion and I'm going to stick by it forever. Ooh, baby. Now this I respect. Nobody should guilt you into an apology about wanting her to do what's right i respect it garcelle i really do i see what Jax gets that cut and dry personality for him because baby you was playing no games with erica girl i said what i said and i ain't changing it okay and what else is going on sudden then apologizes to her because she felt like she caused her a lot of pain and blamed her for things that weren't hers so Erica tells her, thank you. She starts to cry. Sudden was like, you know, seeing her cry made me realize that Erica really needed that. Well, what about the apology that you need? The apology should come from Erica for frightening you so badly. When y'all were at Kathy's dinner, turning to you like you were in a scary movie and going off on you or what? Or what? Threatening you? Did you forget that sudden? Erica owes you an apology, but you know what? She's not going to apologize because she feels like she's vindicated. Erica, you are not. You're not. You're no victim. So I don't know why you're sitting here forcing these women's hand to apologize, but you get in a confessional. I, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm good. I'm good. They don't have to apologize. They don't want to apologize. You know, forget them. Then you come right back and talk about it again. And sudden, this is what I'm saying about you being a glutton for punishment. You always gravitate to people who don't treat you right anyway child kyle then apologized as well because i can't let sudden do it and i didn't do it erica says she appreciates the acknowledgement baby that better than me because i would not have apologized for feeling the way that i felt i'm not about to say sorry that i want you to sympathize and empathize with the victims ma'am please get real expeditiously like get real and that was the end of the episode the episode was kind of dry, but it had a little bits and pieces here and there. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought of this episode. I thought that Erica was being ridiculous. I respected the fact that Garcelle was not a confessional gangster, and she said it exactly how she should say it and write to Erica's face. Dorit didn't apologize either, and for that, I respect her. But Dorit rarely apologizes unless it's something that will affect her. She's no dummy. Okay, I feel like some of the ladies... They look at the social media and they know what's being said. So they make sure that they behave accordingly. Maurice L and Kyle, please stop filming scenes together, honey, because y'all ain't fooling me. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.